Hello, everyone, and welcome to VMblog's coverage of the KubeCon Cloud Native Con event taking place in Chicago this year. And today we're joined by Cam Amir, the Director of Technical Alliances at Cribble. Cam, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this. I guess, can you kick uh, kick off the discussion? Just give viewers a quick overview of Cribble. Sure, sure. So uh, Cribble was founded about five years ago. Uh, we are a uh, data pipeline. Originally, what was the pain that we saw in the field was that customers were having trouble collecting data and doing doing things with specifically logs, metrics, and traces, and getting this data to destinations like just a SIM or log analytics platform. So what where Cribble cut its teeth was basically being able to route and collect that data and then do interesting things with it. So for example, we can uh, optimize the data uh, prior to sending it into an, uh, a destination but that's actually grown significantly in size. So we can do things with um, Elastic, Splunk, uh, other data sources, other data sims, uh, and do this at scale. Talking about Cribble, where do you guys fit within the um, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con ecosystem? Sure. So we basically sit in the uh, observability space. So helping customers collect all this data and then send it to the destination that they needed uh, in the format that they needed. So ideally, if you have data that's being collected by say one particular agent, but you need it spread across multiple tools, you have multiple teams that are working in different silos, but you wanna share the same data or you wanna collect and send the same data to multiple destinations, Cribble can help with that capability. So for attendees of the event and they're planning on uh, you know who they're gonna visit at, at which booth, Maybe if you could talk about some of the types of problems that you solve for them and maybe get into some of the specific use cases. Sure. So I'm sure a lot of the attendees uh, might sympathize with this one particular use case where they're working with, they're probably in the operation side of the house, but they're working with their security counterpart and they want access to the same data because guess what? Their application's broken and they're pretty sure if they get access to say CloudTrail or some application data, that they'll be able to solve why they are they're having problems uh, in that scenario where Cribble helps bridge the gap between and between security and application operations teams is that we can actually share that data so the security team can actually turn the nozzle on start sending the data that the application team cares about but since we can obfuscate mask information we can route just the data that they need into the application teams um, say Datadog or New Relic or whatever they're looking at, the security team has confidence that they're not spilling any potential PII data or sensitive data, but they're giving the data to the application team that they can now actually start to leverage. And now the teams can work together and collaborate and find out why this application is broken or why these uh, issues are happening downstream. Maybe you can take kind of a deeper dive into some of your technology offerings and when we look at the landscape of people that are going to be at the show, there's, I think there's 250 vendors this year. Um, what are the things that makes Cribble unique or differentiated in the market? Yeah. So for us, the biggest differentiator is that we're really around helping customers get the most out of their data and let them do what they need, giving them choice and control over that data. Uh, so we effectively are this kind of data Switzerland <laughs> where we allow customers to do what they want with their data prior to sending it into an indexed backend and time series data store or what have you. Uh, this gives that customer flexibility and freedom to say, hey, look, I'm, I have this, pro this tool that I'm using today, but I'm seeing all these new tools. I go to KubeCon and I see these other wonderful products that I would like to try out. Cribble gives them that freedom to go ahead and point their data to that new tool and see, is it actually better when you're comparing apples to apples um, between the two destinations? And if it is great, it's really easy to migrate to that new tool because Cribble can give you that easy button to effectively send the data to that new product. Now, KubeCon is one of those, uh, you know, big major event shows that uh, people like to make announcements at. Uh, I don't know if your company is making any new announcements at the show, or maybe you've announced something recently that you guys are going to be showcasing, uh, you know, at your booth. If so, could you maybe talk a little bit about that? 
Sure, sure. So um, while we are going to be making announcements uh, and they will be up and coming, <laughs> <laughs> I can't make them today, um, but they are really focused around strengthening our partnerships in the ecosystem, uh, specifically around uh, different data, uh, data destinations, as well as giving enhanced capabilities around uh, Kubernetes clusters and Kubernetes capabilities. Uh, so we have a product called Cribble Edge that allows us to collect data at the edge. And one of the projects that we're working on is effectively helping customers get more uh, telemetry out of the edge, but also being able to send that data to, again, multiple destinations. So gives them that freedom and choice to do with what they want with that data. Now, during Kubernetes, uh, they're going to be talking a lot about the big picture and futures. What are some of the themes and trends that Cribble sees and that you'd be interested in moving into 2024? So what we're seeing uh, kind of in the beginning here in the field is a lot of customers are starting to think, I need to be able to send my data to not just you know very specific indexing type of technologies, but also send their data to more data lakes and being able to actively search that data and understand what's going on there too. Uh, and make it so that it's easy. You don't have to build an entire um, factory to go query that data. So what we see is a lot of people are very interested in leveraging these new data lakes, but making it easy for them to then query that data at rest and not having to index it and have to bring it somewhere else. Uh, so in line with that, we're seeing an up uptick in people's uh, interest with Cribble Search. So a lot of our customers are seeing that there is a, a big benefit to send the data to one destination, one data lake, and then being able to query that um, without having to index it or having to uh, throw compute uh, to index and collect that data. Now, Cam, you've provided with us with a, a lot of great information. I'm a visual guy. Uh, I know attendees are going to be coming to the booth and you guys are going to be showing uh, demos of product left and right. But is there anything that you can show us right now? Give us a, a quick demo. Absolutely. Uh, so I love being able to give a little bit of demonstration. Uh, the first thing I was going to very quickly show, this is effectively what our product looks like uh, with the different uh, aspects here. Uh, at the edge, we have a uh, Cribble Edge agent that effectively sits at the edge to collect data uh, and help route it to multiple destinations. Uh, in the middle, we have Cribble Stream that allows us to collect, optimize, and transform data prior to sending it to destinations and also sending it into a data lake. Uh, we also have a capability to replay data out of that data lake. So that gives customers much better options with that data. And then finally, we can search the data, whether it is on the edge or in a data lake or in a federated way, we have the ability to search that information. Uh, the good news here is that we can always go back to our docs page and look at that and look at all the other wonderful documentation that we have. I'm going to quickly show you a version of Cribble. Uh, this is all Cribble Cloud. So you can actually go to cribble.cloud and effectively start this on your own. Uh, the way that Cribble works is we have a collection of worker group, or worker nodes that sit inside of a worker group. Uh, what they do is allow us to start collecting data. Uh, so we can set up sources. So in this case, I can either collect S3 buckets, I can collect out of REST APIs. Uh, I can also get data being pushed to me, or I can pull data out of, say, S3 buckets and other types of destinations. Uh, in this scenario, what I've done is I've created a data gen. So if you want, ever want to have a test to validate your data, you can create your own data gen. Uh, in this case, I've created one for Palo Alto. And what I did was I decided to route it to my Amazon security lake. So here I have my Palo Alto logs, and here I'm going to start generating them and sending them into my Palo Alto, uh, into my Amazon security lake. The cool thing I can do here is I can actually capture and see what that data looks like prior to sending it out. So here I can have an understanding of what that data is going to look like. Um, once I finish capturing this data, I can actually save it as a sample file. So I can now start manipulating it and seeing how to make it better uh, and optimizing it within Cribble Stream. The good news is we have a, idea, a, a concept of, of content packs that allow us to uh, manipulate the data and do all kinds of fun stuff to it uh, out of the out of the box. So in this case, I have my Palo Alto 
uh, pack. And we can take a look at the pipelines. I'm going to specifically look at my pan traffic. And what this is, is basically a collection of functions that allow me to do and manipulate the information that's flowing through. So here I have a uh, Palo Alto log of uh, traffic log. Here's what it looks like raw before, as I, you saw in that capture. And then once it goes through my pipeline, you can see we're actually going to modify it. So it'll actually make changes to this data. So where you can actually remove, or we can uh, optimize the data prior to sending it out. Uh, we can add fields. So say you want to add an index field or maybe a source or source type, you can do all of that here. And then at the end, I can see, well, how much change happened here? In this scenario, I have a very small uh, sample size, but you can see that I've reduced the amount of data that's flowing through the system. I've reduced the length of these events. Uh, and I've also reduced the number of fields that I'm being that I'm sending through. So it kind of helps understand, you know, at scale how much I'm going to save, whether it be from a storage perspective or from people's time. If you have a security admin that's doing all this work uh, or an application person that wants to get access to this data, it's really easy to put them in front of the product and start sending routing data between sources and destinations, and then being able to see what that data looks like. And then very quickly. Uh, we also have the capability to search this data. So I already ran the search, makes it a little faster. Uh, in this scenario, I can actually see all those events. This is actually searching the Amazon security lake. Uh, so I can start pulling in information. So if I want to see all the untrusted um, VLAN IDs, I can add that to my search and then just run a quick search and see the destination IPs that are in that untrusted VLAN. But again, all of this on one platform, uh, in one cloud instance, uh, you can all do this, and there's my IP. Uh, you can do all of this um, today. We give out a Cribble Cloud instance for customers to play with. They can do up to a terabyte of data per day, uh, which should cover most home labs, <laughs> so you can go <laughs> play with it and actually learn how to use the product. And we have a great deal of uh, resources um at our website so we have like an entire uh education path it's all free uh, all you have to do is sign up and get certified well thanks for that great demo where can people go if they want to find out more information about cribble and maybe they can't be at the show what's a good place for them to go sure so you can go to cribble.io uh, that's probably the best place to start looking at our website uh, we have lots of content the education uh, is free, so you can start there. Uh, we also have sandbox environments where customers can go and play with the product uh, in a lab type environment. Uh, and then finally, they can go download or use our Cribble Cloud instance, which is a free instance uh, for up to terabyte, a terabyte of data per day. Well, thanks for taking the time to uh, speak with VM Blog, and we look forward to seeing you at KubeCon. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, guys.